that's kind of the uh, that's a, the little uh, planning grid as a result of what we're going to do now but they don't one doesn't come before the other necessarily what we found in the schools we've been working in is that the planning emerges from the learning walk mm -hmm. and because the learning walk is process driven not outcome driven there you go key first part so most of the planning and this was uh, clear at the last two we've done uh, many of the groups thought well we do a learning walk and then we do a community conversation and we get the parents involved hear their ideas and then we go and do something completely different called strategic planning and so uh, uh, we want to have those integrated because you do work in an organization so you do need to have a strategic plan in a sense that's more like a mental map of where you want to go and in one school it was really great uh, all of you would like it because uh, uh, Sally was with the parents in the morning and then they asked well what is George staying and they, they said yes he's going to work with the leadership team and the parents said well why can't we go so Sally was a good bridge and invited him and the two parents came to the strategic planning and it changed the value of the whole thing I helped kind of facilitate that because we're used to splitting it off. Um, so we're doing that with each other, but uh, keep in mind that you have this framework and you're looking at what you can do to initiate and build, create a shared culture and build people's capacity. So that's what the learning walk does and the community conversation. And I'm going to mention uh, the facilitative tools that are behind that for leaders. Uh, they work with parents too and I've referred to some of them before. But you always need in a conversation to have a question. And so I was sent six questions. I'm only going to read them. They may or may not be yours. But I found them very helpful to plan a session responding to somebody's question even in advance. And if you have questions as we go through it, that will be more helpful. Uh, so the focus is understanding how to facilitate. It's the, it's the why uh, and what of the learning walk. What we did earlier was a bit of the how. Here's what you do, you show them some pictures, you walk around, you say, I see it. So, but what we want to look at behind that is the why and the what of the learning comes here. What's, what's it serving? Why are we doing it? How would we know? So we did the how earlier, we're doing the why and the what. And that's what questions you raised, Ruben, which is you wanted to know how to build an understanding, how we as leaders create a structure, can structure a learning walk. In other words, you know the how to, but how do you, it's another how is what's, what's the best structure for that? What's my role in that? Second, how do we set the scene with parents around this? In other words, that's very good. Like, what are we inviting them to? And how do we say that? I like your term, Ruben, of how do we set the scene? Then what protocols guide this strategy? Help me with protocols if I was like, because, you know, besides being from New Mexico, I think I know what protocols are. But if I was a prep parent, what word would you use instead of protocols? What, what guides, what were you trying to get to there, Ruben? What guide, what something guides this strategy? Yeah, what is our, if we're going to go about setting up learning walks, yeah. if that underneath all that, and I didn't want to put my words into it, but it's about, as you said, it's about the relationship. So how do we guide that so we get the relationships and we get the openness so that we actually make progress with that? 
Yeah. Yeah. Another yeah. protocols around do's and don'ts, or are there yeah. no do's or don'ts? Yeah, right. Well, there's probably lots of don'ts. Yeah, no, the protocols yeah. could be like do's and don'ts. So, like yeah. do's and so what, what are the do's and don'ts yeah. that guide yeah. this yeah, that's strategy? Right. Yeah. That's, right. that's a good word, because par- all of us would understand do's and don'ts. Yeah. That's what you mean anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Protocol, though, is, is, uh, can be deeper, so I'm not ignoring the word. Uh, how can we then, the fourth one was, how can we ensure a learning walk makes a significant contribution to the engagement of parents and their families? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, is this, is this really worth the time and energy? Does this make a big difference? Or a little big difference yeah I like that question and then the fifth one was the actual running of an actual learning walk things we as educators need to focus on to make it a meaningful experience for our parents I really like that question and I may start in parts with that where am I paying attention if I'm leading I need to pay attention to something uh, and that's, I do want to mention that. It's kind of like the river that's underneath the rate the water's running. Uh, like we have guests with us, and one of the things you have to pay attention to is everybody's well being. Because well being isn't an outcome, it's a state, it's a field. And we've seen, haven't we, Sally? I mean, especially yesterday, the parents came, they really, boy, if you looked at their faces, it's kind of like, why did I say I'd come? It must be because Joan asked me. They really were struggling right at first a little bit in the community conversation because here are the kids are sitting in a circle. And uh, once what you want to do, first and foremost, is activate the well-being in the group because that's the resource that does the work well-being so if people aren't well there's no proper energy for being productive right well-being always precedes increased productivity we usually go right to want to just get better at it why just because you're married you know no there's got to be some other reasons and then the sixth question uh, suggested was what takes place after the learning walk post discussions so that's kind of like the implications in terms of leadership that's very good it's good as a leader to anticipate where you're going to be spending time and energy and what you might want to focus on that we think will lead to a rich richer sense of your strategic planning on the sheets about shaping the culture and building capacity because that whole document you're working with is about the partnership with the parents. We did have an insight to that yesterday, and I don't think they'd mind if I mention because the leader was very good in helping her team understand that we could talk forever internally about what we're doing and saying what needs done. But that's not what this is about. This is about how we as a school relate to the parents and how we how we help them so their goal became really good it was to support and provide knowledge to parents about their role that was their first activity uh, which was a whole new one because some of the leadership team because that's outward facing right instead of solving the problem inside and the second one of the goals on one of those is about shared leadership so one of the goals you get going on, how do we share educating the kids? What's my role? What's your role? Who moves first? Who moves second? Where does it happen? So those are, those are on your sheet. I'm just mentioning them. Those parents did a pretty good job. Those are good goals, and the uh, indicators are good. And this is about that relationship, not about your internal effectiveness as a school or a classroom. And I'll go through that with the slide. So those were the six. Uh, you got some of them. If you have other questions as we go, our focus here is being feeling per- competent and equipped to 
use the learning walk. The adaptation is a community conversation, but it follows the same rules. And some others will emerge. But the learning walk is a good concrete how-to to look at this. So here's 